Hi, my name is Ricardo Weinhardt and uh, I'm quite excited about this following video. It's an interview that I did with uh, a friend of mine, Gregory Daniels, and he's an attorney by profession and is also serving on a number of boards. So I've asked him a couple of questions um, about his experience with uh, non-profit organizations and, and then I've also asked him some of these uh, top tips for uh, potential board members. Uh, so I'm quite excited about it. Um, I also want to remind you that, you know, with the King 4 report, uh, they've actually taken on board uh, one of the, the recommendations I made with a colleague of mine, and they suggested that organizations collaborate with professional bodies in their search to find board members for their organizations. I think that's quite a good opportunity for organizations um, to identify professional bodies and also to identify potential members that could serve on your, uh, the board of your organization. Now, it's important when you recruit any new board members, you must have a proper induction process um, to familiarize board members and uh, to tell them about the organization. So, this video, I would encourage you to share this video with your fellow board members, uh, perhaps play it at the um, next board meeting. Hi, my, my name is Greg Daniels, I'm an environmental lawyer and I serve on a number of um, um, NPO and PBO boards for various um, organi organizations. Yeah, it's just a way for me to give, to give back, so I like, I sort of like meeting new people and this is a way for me to do good um, by simply doing uh, meetings. So yeah, it's, I find it very full. full fulfilling and challenging at, at, at the same time. I think um, some of the key challenges is, is while, I, while I love meeting new people, it's also a challenge to work with them because everyone has, has different styles. Um, some of the key challenges I find is some board members don't know when to stop. Um, I like board meetings to be at least a minimum of an hour, um, maximum um, an, an, an hour, say 90, 90 minutes because I feel that keeps people Coming, coming back if board meetings go on for forever and ever, people tend tend not to come. If a meeting is set for ten o'clock, be there at at ten o'clock because it means if you are late, you know you're holding up five or six other people. And I think that is very disrespectful. So rather try to be there early, get the meeting to start on time, and get it to finish because it's pointless coming for a meeting at ten o'clock and then it only starts at eleven, which means you only get out at. at at um, 12, I think that type of behavior drives um, other board members away to send the agenda out, um, you know, a couple of days before, or pre preferably at least a week. But sometimes people don't mind if it's if it's a couple of days before. But if there's a lot of pre-reading that's required, you know, give people at least two two weeks and don't be afraid to send them a reminder that you've already sent out the pack that they need to read it before the meeting so they can come um, prepared. Um, the other challenge is that a lot of board members don't understand fully what their roles are, so it can lead to some conflict at, at times. But I think that for any organi organization, um, there's always going to be some, some conflict. Yeah, one of the things that I find difficult as well as being a board member is that you have to, because board members, in my view, are supposed to be responsible for strategy, but sometimes we want to get involved in the low, low logistics. So you have to have enough um, faith and confidence in your C, C, your chief executive officer that he's doing, that he or she are doing the right things. And it's very difficult sometimes because you have to have that distance between board members and being in, involved in the um, organi organization. So it feels like it's sort of a loose level of, of control. And that's been, that's been a huge challenge for, for me and I think sometimes for the, for the CEO and for other board, board members. You don't stop, you have to market the, the, the organi organization as, as well and I think that's where, well I think that as, as a board member I've um, fallen short of that, I haven't done enough, enough marketing because it's our responsibility to make the organi organization known elsewhere and then also to sell it to other potential um, board board members, um, 
so so yeah so that's a marketing is a, is a lesson that I'm that I'm learning as 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 well I think the, the top tips would be one is to know the constitution of the organization that you that you wanting to serve on as a board member because everything really revolves around the the, consta, the constitution it's also to have a good um, minutes of your of your meetings because it's important that you have a, a proper record and you know exactly what was decided and who's responsible for the particular task yeah and then I think another tip would be to not to be afraid to establish com committees and also but to hold those committees accountable and to make sure you know they have set time frames or set dates within which they have to come back to the uh, board so you can make so you can make an informed um, decision um, yeah, and other things is just to treat everyone um, with the same level of res re respect and to always be kind because you might have board members with different people from different backgrounds, but that doesn't mean that um, just because one might be a lawyer or doctor that they are more valuable in actual fact. Everybody's experience does help to make the board function and work um, better.